it's a new month and I'm here with five new book recommendations. Five books that I think you should be reading in 2021 if you haven't read them already. So let's get started with today's video. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, welcome. My name is Flor and I post new videos every single week, every Wednesday, talking about books, as you can guess from today's video, but I also talk about productivity, I talk about working from home, working for yourself, about life in New York City and about life in general. If you like what you're seeing, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and hit the notification bell to be notified every time I upload a new video every single week. In this video, I am going to be sharing five book recommendations with a little surprise at the end. These are five books I read in 2020 and that caught my attention for one thing or another, so I wanted to share them with you. If you like this idea and if you like books and if you like reading books and hearing about book recommendations, recommendations, I have uploaded three previous videos with a total of 15 book recommendations between the three of them. They will be linked up here and down below in the description box if you want to watch them if you haven't already. Now, with all that being said, let's get on to today's video and to these five new book recommendations. The first one is called Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. And yes, Celeste Ng, you may recognize her name. I have recommended another book by the same author called little fires everywhere. The video where I review that book will be linked up here if you haven't watched it already. I suggest you go and do that as well. And since I really like that book, I decided to go for this other book by Celeste Ng that is actually her first book she published. So this book starts by saying that Lydia is dead. This is not a spoiler, this is literally the first sentence in the book. Lydia is dead but no one knows this yet. This is how this novel begins, it's a story about a Chinese American family living in Ohio. Lydia is one of the three children that her parents Marilyn and James Lee had and without a doubt she's the favorite one. And their parents are determined that she will fulfill the dreams that they couldn't. So when Lydia's body is found in the nearby lake, the delicate balancing act that has been keeping the Lee family together is totally destroyed and throws the family into chaos. This is a story about family, about siblings, about secrets. I really liked it. I think knowing that this character, this very important main character is dead from the very beginning and trying to understand what happened, what went wrong or how things ended up in that place is what this story does so well and sharing it like bit by bit, chapter by chapter until the very end. I think it's a very heartbreaking story in a way, but so well written that you really turn those pages, you really want to get to the end, you really want to know how the story ends. Again, another great book in my opinion by Celeste Ng and my first recommendation, one that you should read for sure. The second book I have to recommend is called The Vanishing Half by Brit Brennett. You might remember that last year in my video with book recommendations that I published in November, I talked about the importance of incorporating new voices into the books you read, the music you listen to, the people you watch on TV, the people you follow on social media. In that video, I recommended a book called Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reid. It will be linked up here if you wanna go watch that. And in this video, I am recommended a new book by a black author, which is in this case, Britt Brannett. The Vanishing Half is the story about the Vignes twins. The Vignes sisters are identical twins that grew up in a small black Southern community. But when they are 16, they decide to run away. And after doing so, their lives drift apart. And each of them chooses a different path. And this path takes them to a different family, to a different community, to a different racial identity. Many years later, one of the sisters comes back to their hometown with a black daughter, trying to escape from her life while the other sister is secretly passing as a white woman and her white husband knows nothing about her past. But of course, without them knowing, the lives of their daughters intersect. So the story is about what will happen with the next generation, what is going to happen when their lives connect again after many, many years apart. The story goes about many generations, the generation of their parents, their lives, the lives of their daughters, and how they keep on 
changing, how they have different ideals, how they have different plans for life. I think the book does a great job talking about race, but not only about that, but about how someone's past can influence their future, their decisions, their desires, their expectations. And it explores why someone might choose to live a life very, very different from your origins. I read this book during my summer holidays last year, and it was a real page turner, as you say. I really wanted to know how the story turned out, how each sister's story developed, and it did not disappoint. I think it's a great story and overall a great book recommendation that I think you should be reading. The third book I wanted to recommend is called The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. And again, yes, Lucy Foley, I've mentioned her before. I talk about another of her books called The Guest List. If you haven't watched the video where I recommended that book, it will be linked up here so you can go and watch that one. And that was my first book by this author. And since I really liked that one, I went for another one. The Hunting Party has a different premise from The Guest List, but in the end, it's kind of this same story of a locked room mystery where someone gets killed and since no one can get in or get out of that locked room, of course, one of these people must be the guilty one. In this case, a group of old college friends get together to celebrate the new year and for that they rent a cabin in the woods very far from civilization, very far from anyone else. They arrive on December 30 and right after that there's a huge blizzard that seals the lodge off the rest of the world. And two days later, Jen January 1st, one of them is, well, dead, of course. <laughs> no, it's not funny, but I mean, it's the whole point of the book. <laughs> So the strip begins very innocently, they're sipping champagne, they're remembering things from college, but after decades, there are secrets piling up, there are resentments, and being together brings all of that back. So there's this phrase that says, keep your friends close, right? So the question for this book is, how close is too close, right? <laughs> so overall, I think this is a great book. Again, another page turner, you really wanna know who the killer is. In my case, in this one, I somehow guessed what was going on but not to the full extent of it. I think the author has a great surprise at the end and I think that makes a great book. If you like the guest list, you're gonna love The Hunting Party, so definitely go read this one as well. Book number four is called The Jet Setters by Amanda Ear Ward. The story starts with Charlotte Perkins. She is a 70-year-old woman who sends an essay to a contest called Become a Jet Setter in which if she wins, she can go on an all-expense paid cruise around Europe. She dreams of winning this contest because she wants to reunite with her children. Lee, the eldest daughter, an almost famous actress, Cord, a Manhattan venture capitalist who cannot seem to find a bride, and Regan, her youngest daughter, who's a mother and whose life seems to be doing not so well. Charlotte really misses the time when her children were little and when she literally meant everything for them. So she wins the contest, they all go on a cruise and spend 10 days sailing across across Europe. So as you can imagine, not everything goes according to plan and as the Perkins family gets together again, secrets are revealed and they are forced to confront the defining choices they're made in their lives. Well, this is what this book is about. I know some people don't like this book that much because it doesn't describe the characters that well or that deep, but for me it was a really good book. It has some intrigue, it has some things that you do not figure out until the very end and I think it's funny, it has a bit a mystery. It has a bit of everything I kind of like in books. So in my opinion, it's a really good one and I think you should read it. And the last book I wanted to talk about today is called In Five Years by Rebecca Searle. And I know I promised a surprise by the end of this video and the surprise is this book. To be completely honest, I did not like this book at all, but I read so, so many good recommendations about it from people I actually value <laughs> their opinions and books. They said it was a great book that everyone should read it. And for me, it just was not that type of book. But when I went on Goodreads and I read some other people's reviews, I think people find it either an excellent book, five stars, or a really bad book and give it one or two stars. So seeing that this is a controversial book, I decided to include it in this video. So you might pick it up and read it yourself and then figure out what kind of book is it for you. Is it a really good one or not a really good one? So that being said, let's talk about the book in case you want to give it a shot. The main character 
author on this book is Danny Cohen. She is a lawyer and she has just gotten the best job offer ever and her longtime boyfriend has proposed. So everything in her life seems to be going great and according to her five-year plan. But suddenly she wakes up, she is in a different apartment with a different ring on her finger and a different man by her side. She runs to the TV and she finds out that it's the same date, December, but of 2025, five years into the future. After about an hour trying to figure out what's going on, she wakes up again back in December 2020. So she can't really shake what happened, but at the same time, she's not the type of person, unlike her best friend Bella, that believes in visions and in dreams and all that kind of stuff. So she decides to forget that anything happened and goes on with her life. That is up until four years later when Bella introduces to her and her fiance her new boyfriend, which is of course the man she saw in her dream from the future. So of course Danny must figure out what's going to happen if this future she saw in her vision is going to turn into a reality. And in that case, maybe what she can do to prevent that. So now you might be thinking why I didn't like this book. I think the plot is great. When I read what this book was about, I was very, very eager to read it. But then I think the plot is amazing and then that's just it. I don't think the writing is really great. I think it's all about brands and people and name dropping. I really did not like that. And the parts that were supposed to be emotional were not really emotional for me. It did not make me cry at all. And the parts that were supposed to be funny did not make me laugh. So I think overall the book was maybe not for me. I did not like it. I would not recommend reading it. But again, since so many people seem to love this one, I thought I had to include it in this video as let's say a controversial choice. <laughs> so if you have read it, please do let me know what you think down below in the comments. And if you haven't and you decide to read it after this video, of course, do let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. So that is everything for today's video. As usual, of course, do let me know what books you're reading right now down below in the comments. Let me know what you have just finished, what book you think I should be reading and including in my future videos. And if you like all about books, don't forget to follow me on Instagram. You can find me at Flower Area, as you can see here. Over there, I share what books I'm reading at the moment and I share new book reviews as soon as I'm finished with the books. And of course, you can also add me on Goodreads. You can find me there as Loverera as well. And as always, if you like this video, of course, don't forget to give it a thumbs up to subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And I will see you on the next one. Bye!